I'm going to use your comment as justification to go on a little bit of a rant and explain my situation because I am so annoyed. If you're in the podcastage Discord server, you've heard me rant about this and I am sure you are sick of it. If you aren't in the server, lucky you. Because <laughs> whenever housing comes up, I just start whining in the chat. And that's what this will be now. I will whine on my podcast because it's called The B&W Says Podcast Today. And my name is Black and White because that's what it stands for. And this is what I says. So I have been in the process of buying a house since around 2017 or 2018. And I don't mean that I have been putting down bids on homes since that date. What I mean is I have been actively saving money for a down payment since around that time. If you've ever bought a house, you know you don't just go and say, I want to buy a house tomorrow and then go get a mortgage and buy a house. You have to make the decision, I want to buy property and then start saving a lot of money because a standard mortgage takes 20% down and 20% down on $300,000, $400,000 is a lot of money. So it takes a long time to save up for it. And that is the process that I have been in since around 2017, 2018 in that time frame. Around the beginning of 2020, I was thinking, hey, the market looks all right. I should look into actually buying a home. I have a decent down payment. Maybe I won't hit 20%, but I think the market's okay. And then something happened in the world and it made everything very confusing. I held off on purchasing a home because... For a couple of months, it didn't make sense to go to open houses because they weren't a thing, really. In my area, they were kind of shut down. And then thinking through it, my thinking was flawed in retrospect, but I was thinking, it seems like a lot of people are about to be out of work. That's likely going to mean fewer people buying homes, which will mean the price of homes has to come down. So I was just waiting, thinking I got my savings. I'm going to go buy a home. Well... If you followed the housing market since March 2020, I couldn't have been more wrong. <laughs> it could not have been more wrong. It was 100% the opposite. Demand skyrocketed. Housing prices skyrocketed. So I just said, I th this market is too hot for me. I lost out on a couple of homes before I could even go see them. They were bought out as soon as they were listed, the homes that I was interested in. So I just said, this is too crazy for me, too hot for me. I can't compete. Fast forward another year to mid-2021, I had saved up more money and I start thinking, I'm going to go buy a house now. Again, same thing happens. Houses get bought out before I can even go look at them. I find one house that I absolutely love in a really nice neighborhood. Turns out the property taxes would have been $700 a month for, I don't know, forever until they reappraise the value and it goes up even more. And just on principle... I said, no, I am walking away from this because I'm not going to pay $700 a month in property taxes, which is rent in a lot of places. Well, maybe not anymore, but it used to be rent <laughs> in a lot of places, just in taxes every month forever. And if I don't pay it, you get to take my prop. No, on principle, no, ain't going to happen. And then a couple months ago, I got notice on the property that I am currently living in that my rent was increasing by 30%. That was a big motivator to say, you know what, you are going to buy a home. And then I looked at the housing prices and said, geez, the housing prices have increased about 50% in the last two years. That doesn't make much sense to me. I'm, I don't think the homes are worth that much. And that's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is interest rates have now doubled. They're up to around five, six-ish percent in my area. That means that due to the doubling in interest rate, if you want to keep the same monthly payment, you can buy 30% less of a home. If you could afford a $400,000 home a year ago, now you can only afford a $280,000 home. So housing prices have increased 50% over the last two years. The interest rates have doubled. So it is just a perfect storm. I am priced out of the market saying this doesn't make sense. And what do I do when nothing makes sense? I don't play ball. It's the exact same thing with cryptocurrency. If I don't understand what's going on, if I don't understand the underlying asset, I'm not going to put my money in it. 
with housing prices as high as they are in my area, those prices do not make sense. The houses are not worth that much in my opinion. And then as the interest rates go up higher, it makes it even less logical to buy at these inflated prices. So until the housing prices go down, I just don't want to be in the market. I'm not going to be in the market because housing prices are inflated. The cost of borrowing money has doubled in the last six months. So unless the housing prices decrease by about 30%, it's not going to make much sense to me. I know they likely won't decrease 30%, but I think the market needs to cool off. And in the meantime, what do I get to do? What do I get to do? Let me go ahead and take a sip of water real quick and I will edit it out because nobody wants to listen to that. But what do I get to do? I get to leave my money sitting in a bank where it loses about 10% of its value every year, but simultaneously it's earning about 0.05% interest. I'm making out like a bandit. I'm only losing about 9.95% purchasing power every single year. What a deal. And then if the market ever makes sense again, then I'll buy a house. So to summarize my whining and my rant, yes, it is time to consider moving. It's been time to consider moving for about two years at this point, two and a half years at this point. But given the current market conditions, it just doesn't make sense to me. So I, I don't feel like I can move. To get a home that I would want, I'm priced out of the market right now. I'm priced out of the market if I want to be fiscally responsible. If I want to be risky as heck and just say 75% of my income, yes, that'll go to my mortgage. But I, if you know anything about me, I am very risk averse. <laughs> After having some debt, no, I never want to go back to that. And I understand you do need debt for a mortgage to buy a home, but I still want to be responsible with the borrowing that I do. And I know a bank will just say, Oh, half a million, 750,000, even though <laughs> just, just, they don't care. They don't care how risky the lending is because they just still package it and sell it off within a couple of months. Mortgage backed securities, package them up, sell them off. The bank no longer holds the risk. They don't care. And it's all backed by the government. So why not give out risky loans? So I, as the borrower, have to be that intelligent person. I have to be the one who puts a little bit of, I, I need to pump the brakes and say, okay, they may give me that much money. That's not responsible though. So I am going to pump the brakes, put the car in reverse, back up, and then maybe sometime things will make sense and then I can be responsible and buy a home that makes sense for me. That's my rant. I appreciate the comment, Travis. Thank you very much. You are amazing.